I don't know if these penis scenes, these penis jokes are just throwaways or whether they're going to have really serious repercussions. And basically they are trying to pitch a white people renovating houses show. White people renovating houses. It actually isn't sexy. It's, it's not one of those scenes where it's like, oh, that was weird. That was boundary pushing, but like, I'm a bit titillated. All right, so I just want to come on today to talk about A24's new show, The Curse. You know you can tell me anything, right? Of course. Uh, this is a show brought to us by Nathan Fielder of Nathan For You and The Rehearsal. And this show is another show by him kind of dealing with the difference between reality and real life and what's on television and what isn't. Now, this show is interesting because unlike Nathan Fielder's other notable projects, this one is actually a scripted fictional work. Whereas his previous shows were intentionally trying to blur the line of just how fake reality TV could be and just how blurred the lines between fiction and truth could be. My plan was working great. People could now smoke freely without the bar having to worry about any legal repercussions. And with the audience shoved away in the corner, hardly any customers seemed to notice they were there. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed Smokers Aloud. This show has struck me for a few notable reasons, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around where the plot's going, what these characters are about, and what this show is trying to say. As a result, I think we're in for a really captivating and mature and bold television show. The reviews have come out, and they're overwhelmingly positive. These reviews are people that have seen all 10 episodes, and apparently this show turns into a great reflection on marriage and relationship dynamics and what you do and don't tell your partner. So far this show seems like it's got about five ideas running at once. So again on one hand it seems like it's a commentary on like kind of reality TV. Uh, what is real and what is fake when you know there's a camera watching you all the time. But on top of that the show also seems to be commenting on misogyny. It seems to be commenting on sexuality. It seems to be commenting on gentrification and whitewashing and virtue signaling as well. We're Whitney and Asher Siegel, and this is Flipplanthropy. This isn't your typical home flipping show. Now wipe away the tears. So far, this first episode's main focus is gentrification and this sort of whole thing of like white people trying to be good and help a community while being really condescending and patronizing and kind of sticking their foot where people don't want them. The show is following a couple played by Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone, and basically they are trying to pitch a white people renovating houses show. White people renovating houses the type of ones that South Park parodied, where they go into communities and give them new homes, but obviously they're pursuing fame, they're pursuing profit. Like it's, it's not for the good of community. You can either be a part of the solution or part of the problem. A few months ago, my wife Sharon and I decided to be part of the solution by remodeling and flipping houses for people all over our town. It's not for the good of the community as much as they want to convince themselves and others that it is. And so far, the show seems to be exploring the fact that they're trying to uphold desperately their squeaky clean image so they can have this reality TV show when they aren't squeaky clean people. The first episode hasn't even aired, for example, and already they're being questioned by interviewers and they're both being scrutinized on what their intentions actually are. The views we sort of get into their marital dynamic as well as their kind of personal lives really suggest that this image isn't going to last long and is probably going to get shattered. Nathan Fielder's previous reality shows kind of explored the idea that we're always on camera, you never know who's watching. I think this show is trying to take that concept and dial it up to 11. It seems to me that what the show is going to be exploring is the fact that while they want these cameras on them all the time to show what good people they are, it's actually going to highlight how shitty they are. This is kind of seen in two pivotal moments in this episode. Uh, the first one is the sort of interview that Nathan Fielder has where he gets incredibly defensive, clicks of the woman interviewing him, gets really snarky and kind of completely tanks the interview. Have you thought about potentially talking to your parents though about how maybe they We're may here to talk about us today. What do your parents do? Just curious. What do they do? Uh, my mom's a nurse and my dad actually abandoned us when I was really young, so I don't know what he's doing right now. I'm so sorry about your father. That must have been very... How would you feel if I asked you uh, about your father and kept asking more about that? Huh? I'm not going to, but I'm making a point. You're not him, right? You're your own woman, okay? Look at me when I'm talking to you, okay? Don't look at her. 
I'm, I'm the one talking, so you should look at me. Because when you don't look at me, it makes me feel like you're not listening and not registering the things that I'm saying. It's just common courtesy. It's a little rude to do. Emma Stone's character then tells him they correct this and fix this mistake for their image. He goes and finds the interviewer only to lash out at her again. This second moment and kind of the big centerpiece of this episode is basically this section where the person filming their documentary series says, hey, uh, why don't you go give that girl selling spry cans over there uh, some money and we'll film that and we'll make you look like a good person. And the sort of dark comedic premise here is that Nathan Fielder's character only has an $100 bill. So he gives the girl the $100 bill on camera and then when the cameras aren't rolling, he asks for it back and says he'll go get change. He'll go get a $20 note and that's plenty. Just like go hand her money? Yeah. Isn't that weird? No, just buy whatever the fuck she's selling. You'll be fine. Right, money $10. It's hot out. Go! Something just for being you. Thank you. Okay. Would you like the Sprite Mini? No, no, that's okay. Good. Got it. Honey! I got a hundred dollars! Hey, hey. Honey. So we were just shooting a, a little TV show over there. That hundred dollar bill was all I had. So how about you give it back to me and I'll go get change and I'll buy that whole six pack from you for $20. The girl then curses him and is never seen again. Here. Give it back to it's her! It's okay. It's okay. You I'm... can't do that or I'll curse you. Yo, what? I curse you. <laughs> okay. When the girl curses him, you go, oh, that's the that's the name of the show, The Curse, like that's the name. So what I gather from other reviews is that this curse is gonna have big financial repercussions throughout the show. And it's sort of gonna be a question as to whether this curse is supernaturally enforced and actually legitimate, or whether this marital couple is just falling apart on their own accord and it's got nothing to do with an actual curse. That gets us to sort of the halfway point. After this whole section with the titular curse, there's just these really weird, strange, uncomfortable scenes, character dynamics and sexual situations that I just feel like I haven't seen explored in another show to this extent. And I wasn't expecting the show to kind of go this far. So the first section that's really notable in just sort of weird character dynamics and sexual dynamics. So basically the, the, the setup here is that Nathan Fielder is at a Shabbat hosted by his wife, Emma Stone and her parents. And then we get this weird shot where Nathan Fielder is peeing and it sort of zooms in on a notably rather small penis. So basically the setup here is that Emma Stone's dad comes into the garden and approaches Nathan Fielder and basically kind of knows already that Nathan Fielder has like a small penis and basically gives this lecture about like, oh, you know, if you have a small penis, like it, it, it can really tank a marriage. Like I know what, what issues you're going through. And the way I managed it with my wife was just make her laugh, you know, just laugh about it. Just like have it be a joke. And, and then, you know, what can they say about it? Like you have a small penis, but you can laugh about it. Um, it's a really weird, obviously like uncomfortable uh, interaction and just totally out there. Feels like the dad is basically saying like, oh, I'm sure your ego's hurt. I'm sure it's causing issues with the bedroom, but you know, like I, I figured it out and so can you. Embrace it. Do what you do. You just, you say it once, you say it to a, a complete stranger. Hello, I've got a small penis. You think they're gonna laugh at you, but you know what, they're gonna laugh with you because life's a fucking joke. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I have the, uh, the issue you're yeah, sure. referring to. Break the illusion in your mind. Hey, I'm the guy with the small dick. I tell all my friends, they know. It's, a, it's an interesting moment because Nathan Fielder's character almost seems like he's in denial about him being insecure about this or having it be an issue. He kind of gets really defensive and like, I, I don't care about that. That wasn't an issue. What, what, what are you talking about? The thing I find humor in is his character doesn't push back and go, no, I don't have a tiny dick or anything like that. He's more so just thrown off by the fact that the dad thinks it's actually causing issues. Uh, this is followed by a situation where then Nathan Fielder's character gets in the car with Emma Stone and basically talks to her and says, why did you tell your dad that I have a small penis? To which she says, no, I didn't, I didn't tell dad. I, I told mom and then mom must've told dad. He then lashes out and goes like, well, why, why would you have told her that I have a small penis? Again, like just funny that like, he's not even pushing back at the size thing. He's just annoyed that she told someone. Um, just a really odd exchange. And I guess the whole thing with this sequence is I'm wondering what it means. Nathan Fielder isn't stupid. And this also isn't a show that is just kind of like, 
potty humor, ha ha ha, sex is funny, ha 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 ha. This is a show that seems to be wanting to comment on gentrification. It seems like it's a show that has elements in horror and social satire. So I have to assume this is this is getting at something, whether it's even just Nathan Fielder's incredibly fragile ego and it must be a product of him feeling emasculated, so therefore he has to fuck over an entire community. Maybe that could be it. Like maybe it's just meant to inform the fact that he's a broken, small, little boy on the inside. My theory, however, is then sort of confirmed in one of the most uncomfortable and bizarre sex scenes I think I've ever seen. Basically, Nathan's character is getting Emma Stone off with, like, a toy and is basically getting cucked by himself. Uh, he's basically controlling a toy, but then asking Emma Stone what the toy wants it's bizarre it's weird like an example is he's like oh am i allowed to watch and then she's like no steven the name of the toy she's like steven says no and then he just like looks ashamed at the floor can you ask steven if i can watch he says he says that you can listen but he doesn't want to see your face <laughs> it's uncomfortable it's weird i i admire just how weird it is just how fucking wild the scene is and i admire it because it, it actually isn't sexy it's it's not one of those scenes where it's like oh that was weird that was boundary pushing but like i'm a bit titillated it's uncomfortable it's bizarre um and you're trying to figure out who, what the power dynamic here is too it's Steven says it's your turn. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna watch you finish with him. It's not even like typical cucking where he wants to be less than some other guy that's like banging her. He wants to be less than a toy and he wants her to like reinforce that and give it a name and say that like Steven the toy isn't giving you permission to do X, Y, Z. It's a wild scene and then it hard cuts them. It's a, it's a wild scene and then it hard cuts them back on this squeaky clean image for this reality TV show. Now I'm not trying to like sex shame or kink shame, but I think the hard cut is really intentional because it's just such a wild, weird power dynamic that is hinted at in this scene, in this moment. But outside of that, you haven't really got a sense that that is how they operate yet. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, on top of that, I'm really curious to see what the director's intentions are, played by Benny Safdie, the director of Uncut Gems. He's playing a director, producer, like cinematographer for their reality show. Um, and there's a scene towards the end of the episode where we find out that they're childhood friends and he starts kind of ragging on Nathan and it almost feels like he's trying to seduce Emma Stone and sort of like set up a real life like cuckold situation. So given the fact that we had that weird vibrator sex scene, as well as the fact that the director is clearly trying to kind of tarnish Nathan Fielder's name to his wife and almost like get a leg in there. I'm really interested to see where this goes. Again, I've seen all these reviews talk about the fact that this is basically a really haunting, uh, uncomfortable look into like dysfunctional marriage dynamics, but there are just so many ideas at play in this show. There's this whole arc about this weird German house that they have. There's the whole supernatural curse going on. There's all this stuff about gentrification and whitewashing. Uh, there's all this stuff about whether Nathan Field is going to get his money stolen. There's the weird sex scenes. There's the whole thing about like small penises. As much as I want to give like a really comprehensive breakdown analysis of what I think it all means, and I actually have no idea yet. I, I don't know if these penis scenes, these penis jokes are just throwaways or whether they're going to have really serious repercussions, along with the sex scene as well, as well as the curse itself. But I have to assume knowing Nathan Fielder and knowing how intelligent he is, that all of it's going to come round. On top of that, before I go, I need to give massive credit to Emma Stone. I think she's just fantastic in this first episode. She is an Academy Award winner. She is one best actress. She is a massive, massive actress. Um, but she genuinely is playing like a really hard part here. She has to come off as a really convincing, like typical reality star and then also play a part. And I think she's incredibly convincing in both. Uh, she makes it look so natural, so easy. Nathan Field is also turning in a great performance, but this is his sort of uncomfortable shtick just dialed up with a bit of aggression. He's always been really good at making you unsure of what he's like on and off camera. So here it just, you can't even tell if he's playing himself or not. Uh, it's fantastic. Definitely watch it. Just watch it to be able to say that you've seen it. Uh, even if you don't enjoy it, there's something about just how weird and off kilter it is and all these individual sections that are just really fascinating. And that's my favorite thing about this first episode is I don't know where it's going yet, but there are like five or six 
individual sequences that I found completely enthralling and fascinating. Thank you so much for watching. I'll either do weekly episode reviews of this show or I'll do an entire season review. But uh, let me know what you'd like me to talk about. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.